Today we're driving the 2022 Toyota Camry Hybrid XSE. We've worked our way through the Camry lineup these last couple years, and this is probably the one that I've been looking forward to driving the most. I think it kind of represents the Goldilocks sweet spot in the Camry lineup, and it's probably the best driving one in my opinion. A couple weeks ago we had a Toyota Avalon Hybrid, and I just learned this last week the Avalon is being discontinued, which is a bit of a shame because the Avalon is a fantastic car from Toyota, but this Camry is no slouch either, and uh, let's see if it kind of can still hold up to the test of time with all the crossovers and SUVs that are being sold right now. So, the first thing to look at is just the Camry's styling. I think there are some elements here that seem a bit forced. This XSE has some silver accents on the front bumper and this very interesting roof line that is just feels like a wrap on the roof right there. We have a blacked out spoiler, a rear diffuser, pretty sporty looking camera. You could almost maybe confuse this or mistake it for a TRD, especially with this red paint and black 19 inch wheels. In the back seat, that's really where the Avalon shines. We still have a good amount of space in this Camry. My seat is set to my driving position at five foot 10, and I have just a ton of legroom. There's even a good amount of space underneath the front seat to put my feet, and I can really stretch out back here. So no problems with that. The interior is nicely appointed in this XSE trim. I like the leather on the steering wheel. We have pretty much all the features we could want. We have both heated and cooled seats, three drive modes, eco, normal, and sport. This has 208 combined net horsepower from the electric motors, hybrid system, and the gasoline engine, which is a 2.5 liter four cylinder. All that is mated to an eCVT. Makes for a very smooth, very seamless driving experience. You know me, I'm a big fan of all of Toyota's hybrid products. We get a nice armrest back here. No sunroof in this XSE. We've got a uh, slick top. Let's take a look in the truck. Super wide opening. A lot of trunk space for a sedan. I mean, if you don't need a crossover, this is one of the sedans to get. It's super practical. You can even fold down the rear seats. Let's take a look and see what that's like. Do you get a spare tire? You do. It's right under there, underneath the jack and uh, tire equipment. It's not a huge pass through, but definitely something that to work with if you need to put larger items back here. It's maybe not as sporty as the Honda Accord or as refined feeling, but it's pretty darn close. And I actually like the way this hybrid drives better than the Accord Hybrid. The Accord Hybrid was a little bit drony, and uh, this, even though it sounds a bit harsh at speed and under full throttle, is a much more refined driving experience more of the time. Let's take a look under the hood. We've also been working our way through the Toyota Hybrid lineup. We just recently drove a Prius. Of course, we had the Avalon Hybrid a couple weeks ago. The power level from this Camry, even though it's only 208 horsepower, feels really good. This is a very responsive and I dare say quick car on the road in the real world. This Camry Hybrid also gets excellent fuel economy, rated for 47 miles to the gallon on the highway, 44 in the city. Realistically though, I think you can expect around high 40s from these things and maybe even to the 50s if you're hypermiling a little bit. Our headlights just turned on so you can get an idea of what those look like. The front and rear of the car look like they were designed by separate teams, but I think overall it still works. Let's hop inside, I'll show you around the front seat here. We have auto up-down windows on all four corners, which is really nice. All of our Toyota Safety Sense 2.5 systems. They work really well. Toyota's done a nice job refining and honing these. I like these gauges too. They haven't done anything silly like they did in the TRD. It's just a clear, concise, easily readable gauge. Even the center screen has been pretty bright and pretty legible for me this week. It's pretty well organized too. 
You can see your fuel economy on this screen, all of your driving support systems on this, audio, energy monitors, various information like your pre-collision system, what you have enabled, as well as your tire pressure with actual PSI readings. And you've got a bunch of settings that you can go in and change in this fifth menu at the bottom. We have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility. This is a nice, responsive touchscreen. Works super well, very accessible from the steering wheel. Doesn't take a lot to uh, get there and press and control things on the screen. And uh, that's great, even though it looks a little bit tacked on there and maybe not the most well-integrated display, the functionality is really nice and uh, it is a quick to respond touchscreen. We have physical knobs and controls for all of our climate settings. I just love the ergonomics in some of these Toyotas. They work so well, they're so simple, so easy to use. We have physical controls for our heated and cooled seats, our drive modes, all of our steering wheel buttons. Over here we have a few different settings. We can turn on our heated steering wheel, enable our camera view here. This has a 360 cam that's pretty cool. The reverse camera isn't the most high resolution, but it's very easy to enable and look around. You can press this for different settings. Auto high beams. You can pop the trunk with the press of a button and uh, of course your fuel cap right there. Before we get started with today's drive, I would like to thank our sponsor for this video, Phantom Wallet. This is my daily wallet. It's a well-engineered product that I really have enjoyed using the last year or so. This is the Phantom R, it's their higher-end model. You can bolt on a number of different attachments to the back. This is the key holder attachment, and uh, I really like this because it kind of combines everything that I need out of my wallet. I can hold my keys, I can have a money clip on the other side that I bolt on, hold some cash, and I can fan out all my cards like this. There are a number of different finishes, color choices, card capacities, pretty much customizable to anything that you need. Check them out at phantomwallet.com and use the code TOFER for 10% off your order. All right, let's take this on the road and see what it's like to drive. If you're wearing headphones, as you probably should be with the binaural audio in this video, you'll hear that there's a little bit of a noise as you reverse. It's not as spooky as the RAV4 Prime is, or the RAV4 hybrids. It's a little bit more of a pleasing tone. When you first start up this Camry Hybrid, the engine will run for a few minutes until it gets up to temperature, gets all the systems going, and then it will turn off and go into hybrid mode whenever it sees fit. So off throttle, at low speeds with light levels of acceleration. And you can see that it's turned off when you have a little EV symbol show up in your gauge cluster. Super quiet cabin. Very nice driving inputs. I have great brake pedal feel for a hybrid. This is definitely the quietest version of this 2.5 liter in the Camry lineup. It can be a little bit grainy in the non-hybrid cars, a little bit rough when pushed. And this is definitely louder than the Avalon or maybe any Lexus counterparts, but still it sounds pretty good. It doesn't seem too harsh when you get into it. Handling here is excellent, super neutral, tracks beautifully for a front wheel drive car at the limit around a corner. There's not a lot of steering feel, but it's, it's weighted pretty well. That'll increase a bit when you put it into sport mode. I really love the way this Camry Hybrid drives. I think this is one of my favorite Toyotas to drive. It's, it's crazy, it's been so long that I've been wanting to drive a Camry Hybrid. I've never really gotten behind the wheel. We've had a bunch of requests, everyone's been asking for it. And uh, I'm really surprised at how well it's delivering from the driving experience. I have truly enjoyed my time in this thing this week. It's a very impressive car and it's really interesting to see the subtleties between this and the Avalon. With two weeks in between seat times, I can't really tell that much of a difference, to be honest. I think if you really wanted a step up, 
from this, you should get a Lexus ES. And uh, that seems to be the general consensus in the comments with the Avalon video too, is that, well, you know, if you want something a little bit more luxurious, just jump up to the Lexus. And that's probably not a bad idea. I haven't driven an ES hybrid, but that's probably the first one I would look at. That said though, for low 30s, this Camry Hybrid XSE is around 33 grand. This is a really, really impressive car. This week, according to our fuel economy readout, we've averaged 43 miles to the gallon over about 300 miles of driving. That includes quite a bit of filming, a bit of hot shoeing around, and usually that's a pretty conservative estimate. Let's put us into sport mode one more time and see how it handles this corner here. There's a real nice refinement to the way this car handles around a corner. The suspension is soft, it really settles into it. You can see over that bump, it kind of really had a lot of body motion. But once it kind of squished into that corner, it's very flat, there's not a lot of body roll. And it's just super composed. The front end really sets in beautifully. A very nice ride handling balance with this Camry Hybrid. I think uh, it hides its weight really well, and the ride quality is super comfortable even on these 19 inch wheels. Let's talk about some of these driving assistance features. We have Lane Centering Active right now, and it's doing a very good job keeping us centered between the lines. Radar Cruise works quite well too. It waits a little bit longer than some cars to pass slower vehicles on the highway, but overall it's a pretty nice system. The buttons work really well on the steering wheel. They're very easy to operate and control without having to look down and see what you're doing. You can turn on and off lane keep assist very easily just by holding this right there. All of your controls are just within a thumb's reach, which is great. You don't even have to go over here to control anything. guys an idea of off the line acceleration up here we'll see if we can find a little bit of a roundabout I'm also pretty surprised at how much acceleration this Camry hybrid gives you in just pure EV mode the engine doesn't seem to kick in as early as it does in some other hybrid models it's still nothing like the RAV4 Prime this is still definitely Toyota's current generation of hybrid powertrains, but quick enough to give you some wheel spin. Yeah, just a very pleasant car to drive. Great inputs, really nice ride handling balance, pretty much all the luxuries and amenities that you could want out of a daily driver in this price point. Super fuel efficient, quick enough, and I would argue kind of fun to drive too. The, the hybrid gamification of the fuel economy number gives you a little bit more engagement, I think, than uh, your standard sedan would. You don't have to worry about shifting, the V6 does sound fantastic, and it is a pretty quick powertrain, but I do not like the way that eight-speed acts. It's a very, it's a transmission that hunts a lot. And this hybrid does a beautiful job of smoothing everything out. Gorgeous GT3, oh my gosh, that's it, that's the dream. In town, you can cruise around pretty much in pure EV mode engine's barely kicking in as soon as you get things warmed up. When 
when you put it into EV mode, that makes it all that much easier to control your electric only inputs. Hybrids are pretty hot right now. They're pretty popular in the market and I can see why. I've always been a really pretty big fan and proponent of Toyota's hybrid vehicles. I think they drive a lot better. They're much nicer to drive and live with than their gasoline engine only counterparts. So in EV mode, we're gonna hit 26 miles per hour it'll automatically de be deactivated. But that doesn't mean you can't go past 26 miles per hour on just pure electricity. Right now we're coasting at around 30 uphill and it's maintaining EV, which is great. All right guys, well, those are some thoughts on the Camry Hybrid. It's been a long time coming. I know a lot of you have been very interested in my thoughts on this and I've been very curious to drive this car this is actually something that I would consider buying someday. If I needed a sedan that was reliable, decently quick, decently spacious, and fuel efficient, basically if I just wanted a Toyota Hybrid, this might be my top pick. Uh, the Prius is just too slow, even though I love the simplicity of that car and its purpose-built nature. This Camry Hybrid is just such a much well, much better rounded package for the price, it's kind of either this or an ES for me. The real advantage to this Camry over the Lexus counterparts is just the usability. The interior is so functional, so usable, so user-friendly. The ergonomics in here are fantastic. And right now, I haven't driven the updated ES, but uh, I think the infotainment in the Lexus is, are, is a little bit more complicated. You can get some more luxuries and some more features, which are definitely something to consider. The Mark Levinson sound systems are fantastic, whereas these, this high-end JBL system and this Camry is just okay. Really, the only thing I would change about this XSE is just have slightly smaller wheels. 18s would suit this car perfectly. The 19-inch sidewalls are just a bit thin for Michigan roads, but everywhere else in the country, I think you'll be in pretty good shape. I always forget how smooth the roads are in the rest of the United States whenever I travel and I come back to Michigan, and it's just bump after bump after pothole. It's no wonder why most of the cars on the road here are trucks and SUVs with large sidewalls and spare tires and lots of suspension travel. All right, guys. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks again for watching. If you want to see more videos on this Camry Hybrid XSE, head on over to the Winding Road Magazine YouTube channel and Charlie from Daily Motor will also have a few videos on this car, including a fuel economy test. Very curious to see what this gets on the highway. The Avalon Hybrid got 48 mpg on this fuel economy route. This will probably do a little bit better. So, all right. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.